place is going to turn. Now, Imam, Afdal Khalqillah al Imam. Nobody is better than him, the closest being to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the strongest being in the sight of Allah. Every single good quality he has. Now a person calls him a cow. Now look at the akhlaq of Ahlul Bayt alayhi which makes difference in the heart of people. Imam Basr alayhi salam said, Ana lastu bakar wa innama ana bakar. He said, I am Bakr and not Bakr. The man didn't tell that, that he proceeded to say something about Imam Bakr's mother. Which is also another even worse than the beginning, the first one. Now what did the Imam say? And the man said to the Imam, he said, your mother was a bad woman. Bad worse about Imam's mother. And we believe that the mothers of Imams, they are what? They are pure. Well, Arhamel Mutahara. They were carried in the pure. Huh? Allahu Akbar. The Imams, they say. These Imams, all of them, from the Prophet to the Imam al Hajjah, they were all were carried in the purified Mutahara. Purified by whom? Not by, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of them in every place that they were carried in every uh, what do you call them the, the stomach that they were carried, they were all purified. And now this person comes and says bad things about that woman, the mother of Imam Bhakti. Now look at how Imam was responding to, to him. Imam alayhi salam said, What you say about my mother? If she is what you said, may Allah forgive her. But if she is not what you say, may Allah forgive you. Do you imagine? Where can you find this kind of wisdom? Imam alayhi salam, he didn't say that no, I have to go fight him. You tell him about it. No, he just, but there is a fight. Huh? But the fight of wisdom. These words of Imam, is powerful than the nuclear weapon. Or what, what, what do you call it? It's powerful that when the man heard this word of Imam alayhi salam, immediately he has no response. And the narration says then he immediately ran to Imam and started kissing the feet of Imam Baka alayhi salam. And Imam was able to change the man from being enemy to becoming a friend. Akhlaq has the power to do that. Good behavior can turn your enemy to become your beloved friend. And Quran says, فَإِذَا الَّذِي بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَهُ عَدَاوَةٌ كَأَنَّهُ وَلِيٌ حَمِيمٌ That is one of the benefits of Akhlaq. That a person can be your enemy, but with your behavior, you can turn the person to become your friend. He becomes your your beloved one with the akhlaq, with the Islamic commands. Today, brothers and sisters, one of the problems that Islam is facing is lack of akhlaq. And one thing that I want to emphasize is that, brothers and sisters, we all have to remember that we are all the ambassadors of Islam. Whatever I might be, at my workplace, I'm an ambassador of Islam. I have to display what the Islamic man is. When people see me, they see a Muslim. But unfortunately today, instead of our akhlaq, our morals, calling people to Islam, no, it's even sending people away from Islam. Sometimes with our behavior, somebody says, if this is what Islam is about, then I forget it. Because of our behavior. Sometimes the way we even act as a Muslim, uh, people don't even want to hear what Islam is about. Which is absolutely against the teaching of Islam. We are all uh, responsible in speaking about Islam, not even by words, with our action. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to ask all of us, how did we act? What, how did we interact with the other people? Because this is all part of our responsibility. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to be the true examples of Islam. Ya Allah, we ask you. Day in and day out, help us to display Islamic teachings, Islamic behavior, whatever we might be. Ya Allah. There is a brother who is in the hospital called Al Haj Shakir Al Rubaid. He's unconscious. He needs your prayer. Please join me in reading ayat to Shifa for this brother. And all those who are sick, Ya Allah, we ask you to give them fast recovery, Ya Allah.